Intercom wants more of the nice people visiting your website to give you money. So they took that little chat bubble in the corner of a website and packed it with automatic meeting booking, data capture on leads, conversational bots, and more. Intercom user Elegant Themes added Intercom to their site and now convert 25% of leads through live chat. Go to intercom.com slash deals to jump on customer intent in the moment. Then see everything else Intercom can do. That's intercom.com slash deals. Hey, welcome back. It's time for another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. So grab your board. We're going to swim out into the sea of ideas with a couple of surfers there sitting at the beach somewhere sipping the, uh, a cold one here, uh, Matt Hines. Well, if by cold one you mean seltzer water, then absolutely. <laughs> we are hooked up here in the middle of a Thursday work day. Paul, how is it that we are this close? Summer is now almost officially oh, over. It's unbelievable. It is. Uh, so my, my wife's birthday is this Saturday, which as a summer beach girl, she's always like, why is my birthday literally on the transition to fall? It's some <laughs> cruel and unusual yeah. every year. It should just be in fall. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, just, I, I don't. I don't know which day. I, don't, I can never remember like which day is summer, which day is fall. Or does it happen like at one thirty-five on one day or something? Summer um, has fallen. That's all I'm going to tell you here. It is, feels that way here that today. Is, that is. That is absolutely true. Well, I appreciate everyone joining us on another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio here today. A very special episode. Remember back in the sitcom days when they would have like you'd have a sitcom <laughs> and then every once in a while they say today on a very special episode yes. of Sales Pipeline Radio. <laughs> absolutely. Um, we have no very special episode. We've uh, we've featured Josh Baez a couple times in the past. We're going to have him again today to talk a little bit about making great plans and visions into a reality, which he is doing uh, magic for our clients every day. So excited to have him here. Yes, Paul. And I hope he gets especially close to the microphone here because we want to hear every special word he has to say here. Yeah, so I'm wearing. I'm, so this is. We've got a total like hacked up uh, system over here. I'm using my my normal blue Yeti. I have headphones on. He did not hear you say that. He is literally like he can see you but cannot hear you. Okay. I'm, mouth, I'm, I'm lip reading right so now. So I will, I will remind him that he needs to get really close to the microphone when he does. When he uncomfortably when he close questions. to the two of yes. you sharing now, that we'll, microphone. We'll, we'll figure it out. Um, and look, this is this is an amateur podcast, my friends. We have a we have a we have a professional producer, but on my side of the microphone, it is a hundred percent amateur. Sure. So, We've never set the precedent. Yeah, no. Well, so <laughs> speaking of that, if you're still listening, thank you for joining us today on Sales Pipeline Radio. We are uh, joining you live on the Funnel Media Radio Network, as always, 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific. For those of you listening uh, during your work day, thank you very much for joining us. If you're listening on the podcast, the, whether this is your first episode or 200th episode, we appreciate having We have streaked by the 100,000 user level, and we continue to grow our audience. It is amazing and humbling, and I'm so thankful for everyone listening. So thank you very much for joining us. And if you want to catch up or if you miss one someday and you want to listen to any other episodes, you can catch every episode of Sales Pipeline Radio, past, present, and future at salespipelineradio.com. We are featuring each week some of the best and brightest minds in B2B sales and marketing, and this week is no different on a very special episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. <laughs> we have Josh Baez. He is a client engagement manager here at Heinz Marketing. He's been with us for over four years, which in and of itself is amazing, Josh, the fact that you have stuck with us and that we have that you have uh, not given up on this uh, this great this, this train. <laughs> Been living in the IT closet all this time. <laughs> Excited to have Josh here. And we've had Josh on the program before a couple of times talking about a variety of topics. But what I want to do today is talk about the difference between thousand foot level and ground level, quite honestly. I think and I was talking with a client about this the other day. There's so many frameworks. There's so much research out there about like what you could do. There's there's benchmarks and frameworks and strategic guidance and lots of ideas of what campaigns can look like. When I was at Microsoft, we spent a lot of time writing PowerPoint decks, and you're not going to execute anything off a PowerPoint deck. Like moving strategy into execution, moving vision into actual results requires a focus on the right work. And so I want to spend some time talking about that. And Josh, I mean, I know specifically with clients you've been working with, we've been refining this process. Talk a little bit about what it takes to take a good idea. You know, an executive sponsor comes into the room, waves their arms, says, here's what you want to do. Your CMO comes in, has an idea. They leave and expect it to get to get published. They expect it to get executed. What does it take to do that well? First of all, Matt, thank you for having me on the third time. I'm officially a recurring guest. Thank you. I'm a big SNL fan. A couple more times, you're going to be in a five-timers club. We'll get you a jacket. <laughs> we'll get you the whole deal. It'll be fine. Well, to answer your question, I think that like the hardest part about turning strategy into tactics is really the fact that you really need to make sure that, that what you're doing can actually 
be implemented. It's, it's one thing to just say like, oh, I want an AVM program, right? But then it's another thing to actually think through, well, what are the individual pieces that actually make up that ABM program and how can we actually turn those pieces into executionable tactics? And so the way that we've started doing it, and this is a framework, like you said, it's constantly been been refined over the years that I've been here and, and even before then. And I feel like we've come to a pretty good place with how we turn these strategies into more tactical things. One of them is that we like to build out the approach that we use. So based on, you know, the theme uh, or the concept that we're going for, understand, you know, well, what's sales involvement in this? What's marketing's involvement in this? What are the different collaborative activities that each of the teams are doing? And then from there, we can then determine, OK, well, what makes sense here? Is it outbound marketing? Are we doing inbound marketing? Is this a direct mail play? Is this going to be a one to one sales approach play? And then from there, like you can continue to kind of refine that and dig down deeper to really better understand, you know, who's responsible for what, when are these different initiatives going to take place? And then from there, you can better determine your next steps. So I, I love that. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts, right? When you get to execution. And I think knowing what some of those are up front is really important to making them work. When you first started answering that, you said you talk about like having these grand visions and making sure that there are things you can execute. And I think sometimes up front, we don't necessarily know that, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, knowing we don't necessarily want to stifle the creative process. We don't want to stifle the brainstorming up front of saying like, what, you know, what if, what if we did this? What if we tried that? Yeah. Just because we don't yet know if we can execute it. But my question to you is not about how to brainstorm that. If you take an idea and sort of figure out how to execute it, if it doesn't work or it's too complicated or simply isn't possible, like what's that process and how do you sort of create some realistic expectations with your client or with your boss on what could actually get implemented either at all or within profitable economics of the pipeline? I think that a lot of people typically come into a room for marketing and they have a list of campaign ideas. And that's great. Like you can have as many ideas as you want. I don't care if you have 10, 20, 30. You can tell me as many ideas as you want. But when it comes time to actually turn those into a plan, like we need to really focus up. And I think that the way that you do that is you understand where's the low hanging fruit? What opportunities do we have now that we can utilize and, and make the most of now, okay, you have an email marketing program. Well, then outbound email sounds like a good way to do it. If you don't have a retargeting system, for example, maybe retargeting isn't in phase one, but it's something that you guys can work towards. So I think that it's a matter of understanding and acknowledging what can you do now and being okay with the fact that you might not be able to do something that you want to do in the next 30 days. But you can work towards that for the next 60 or 90. Talking today on Sales Pipeline Radio with Heinz Marketing Client Engagement Manager Josh Baez. He is a plant dad. He is a death cap for cutie super fan. And we're talking about how to take things from strategy into execution. The other element in doing that is time, right? So you can have your CEO, your CMO come into the room, wave arms, say, this is why I want to try this. I want to get this out there. Let's let's get this focused on. Let's get this done. Things never happen as fast as sometimes we want them to. I mean, <laughs> even internally, you know, you know, get a little more sophisticated in how we manage Heinz marketing, marketing. <laughs> now I am the client and I'm like, oh, this, what is this? How, why does it take this long? It's not just, you know, because you've got all these sort of draconian systems. I mean, it takes time to get this done right, especially when you're doing larger programs, more complex programs that have many layers of integration and complexity across sales and marketing, let alone across marketing channels. Yeah. It also doesn't help when you as a client, Matt, cancel a meeting without telling me. I mean, that's great. Yeah, let's air let's air all our dirty laundry on the episode here, Josh. It'll be great. I think timing is obviously important. I I need to work on this. I notoriously would err on doing things faster. I think that myself, like I know the level of work that I'm able to do in the level of time that I'm typically able to do it. But when you start working with a team and the larger that team grows, you need to start being aware of how other people work, how other people time their different deliverables and how they integrate with the rest of the program. And I think that in terms of timing, it's probably better to err on the side of caution. If you think that something typically takes, you know, five days to do, adding that little extra wiggle room to make that six or seven days even can make or break a production schedule. It's always better to deliver early anyways. And so if you can set that expectation up front, you know, something like this typically takes between seven to 10 days 
at least you can have that expectation outlined before you start going into the tactics. What are some of the components? I mean, let's get really tactical here. You know, when you think about, okay, we've got a great idea, we've got a plan, it's going to take X amount of days, X amount of weeks to, to get it to execution. Are there certain elements of those programs that take longer than others? If you're looking and saying, you know, your boss comes and says, how do you condense this? Are there certain primary culprits that become the real critical path and the things that really create the most longevity, the, the most take the most time to get campaigns from concept to reality? I think, and this is something that a lot of organizations, including ours, deal with on every kind of campaign, and it's the need for content and it's the need for messaging. And I think that a lot of organizations will make the mistake of thinking, oh, well, let's just launch this campaign. We can do it. Like we have the resources to do it. Let's just launch this campaign. But they forget about the key elements of that campaign being, oh, do we actually have content to offer? Do we have something meaningful that the audience can actually engage with? Do we have the right messaging for this audience? Are we talking to them in a relevant way that's actually meaningful to them? Or are we just selling our product? Do we even know who our audience is? We might say, oh, I want to target this industry. Okay, well, that's great. But do we have emails for them? Do we even know who these people are? Do we even know what kind of titles we want to go for? There are so many kind of subsequent paths that you can go on for each of these. And having a really solid foundation of who your target audience is, what your messaging is, and what your content is can really impact the rest of your entire program. It lets you be smarter. It lets you act faster. It lets you be more strategic in that way. Campaign success or fail in the details, right? I mean, you think about, I I don't know about you, Josh, but like in 11 years of doing this, if I had a nickel for every time I had a client or even a prospect say, it's just an email. Give me five minutes. I'll write the email. We'll get it out. (laughs) A professional marketer will say, okay, so um, what are you going to say? And why does the prospect care about that? And by the way, who's it going to go to? And do you have accurate, up-to-date contact information for them? Is it going to get delivered? Is it going to look good? Are you going to spell check it? Is anyone going to do quality control to make sure you didn't (laughs) screw something up inadvertently, accidentally, which we all do all the time with emails that we just write in Outlook to each other, right? So I don't mean to get into sort of rapid fire mode just to sort of make anyone feel bad that says I can write an email in five minutes. Sure, you can. But as Mark Twain once said, if you'd given me more time, I would have written a shorter letter. I mean, sometimes it's worth taking more time to get it right. When you send out something, when your prospects or customers get content from you or marketing from you, that is a representation of your brand. It is a representation of your professionalism. And every one of those touch points has an impact. The positive impact have an incremental benefit, you know, incremental uh, growth and benefits and results. But you you screw something up. (laughs) <laughs> it erases an awful lot of that good that good karma. So it's important to get that stuff done right. All right, we got to take a break, pay some bills. We'll be back with more with Josh Baez talking about taking campaigns from, from strategy to execution. You're listening to Sales Pipeline Radio. Sales teams, is your website helping you turn prospects into customers? Because Intercom thinks it should be. Intercom makes that little chat bubble in the corner of a website. That's their messenger. But it's so much more than that. The Intercom Messenger is designed for businesses to jump on customer intent in the moment. It connects you when you're there or automatically books meetings and captures data on leads when you're away. You'll sell more, more efficiently. Like Intercom user Elegant Themes. They added the Intercom Messenger to their site and now convert 25% of their leads to paid subscriptions through live chat. Just having the Messenger spark valuable customer conversations that Elegant Themes might not have had otherwise. That's Intercom's whole deal, connecting you with customers while they're on your website with timely, personal insights. Because when customers have a great experience, it's great for business, too. Help your website help you land more customers, then see everything else Intercom can do. Go to intercom.com slash deals today. That's intercom.com slash deals. Okay, we've given Matt time enough to uh, flip the burgers over and to uh, refill the glasses, so let's uh, pick up the conversation here. You think it's just a party up here all the time, Paul, that we're just, we're just enjoying ourselves? I'm hoping that you're going to share some with me, because I've eaten all the beer nuts today, I've had all the pretzels, and I'm hungry. I'm ready for some. I know you're giving me good, substantial food for thought, but I need some food for the body here as well. This Saturday is my wife's birthday, and uh, you know what she really wants to do is just hang out at home, relax, and her request for food was chicken wings and cheesecake. Wow. 
So we're doing chicken wings and cheesecake on Saturday, and then I'm basically just going to run all day on Sunday, basically, <laughs> just to sort of try to get that back out of my system. There you go. Uh, all right. Well, thanks again for joining us, uh, coming back to us on Sales Pipeline Radio. We've got Josh Baez today. He's our client engagement manager here at Heinz Marketing. We're talking about moving programs from idea and strategy into execution. We've been talking about doing it the right way, taking the time to think through all the details. And it's one thing to say, okay, I'm sending an email out, right? And you can say, okay, we are sending an email next. That is one channel and maybe one piece of communication. So getting that right and checking all the boxes there to get that right and do it well is one thing. But what if we're talking about a body of work campaign? What if we're talking about various channels that are integrated together? How do you actually coordinate the orchestration of all those different channels together just within marketing? And we'll talk about sales and marketing collaboration here in a second, but just within marketing channels, what are some of your best practices for getting that coordinated and orchestrated well? Yeah, it's tough. It's not an easy orchestration to do. I think that with marketing teams, there needs to be, everyone knows about the sales and marketing alignment need, but there's an even greater need for the people within the own marketing organization to be aligned. If there's even one person who's a little bit ambiguous on what they're doing and why they're doing it, it can cause a whole kind of like spiraling effect on the team, on the program. And so having that upfront communication and alignment is really key for that making sure that people understand what they're working on, what they're responsible for, how the tactics that they're planning play a role in the larger program. That stuff is really important. And it helps to orchestrate that when you build it all out, you say, okay, well, we want these marketing touches to go here and we want these inbound touches to go here and we want these direct mail pieces to launch on these dates. And if you can build a grander picture of everything that's going on in marketing, you'll have a much easier time not only making sure that your team is aligned, but when it comes time to eventually communicate that stuff outside of the marketing organization, you'll also be able to more easily show the work that you're doing in a more meaningful way. Well, and there's a wide variety of tools that you can use to sort of drive that level of orchestration. I think, you know, one thing that we've developed internally is what we affectionately call it the purple grid. It is basically a really complicated spreadsheet that uh, that looks at sort of audiences and channels and campaign flights. It actually ends up being a very, very useful tool for being able to understand what's happening when, for not only for clients and others internally to see it, but also to make adjustments, right? As things, you know, things take longer, things go earlier. This part worked really well, so let's keep it going. If anyone would like to see a copy of the Purple Grid, uh, <laughs> just email us. I mean, you could uh, literally just email Josh, J O S H at HeinzMarketing.com. We'll, um, I'm just inventing this right now. We'll get a redacted version of the, the Purple Grid for you to check, <laughs> check out. So, okay, so there's campaign coordination across multiple channels and then there's coordination with the sales organization so even if you don't have like a whole bunch of marketing channels going i think this is the piece a lot of companies just either forget or miss or just aren't willing to even go get into i don't think of sales as a marketing channel but your prospect isn't thinking well this is my sales time this is my marketing time right. and so it's okay that the message is different integration of sales and marketing efforts is really really helpful and is actually has been proven to drive greater velocity and conversion rate and yield of programs Doing that, though, when it's not just sort of coordinating digital platforms or campaigns, doing that where you're coordinating with people across departments is a challenge in and of itself. What have you found most useful and successful in doing that? Yeah, I think that that comes down to a metric discussion more than anything. You know, if sales doesn't buy into what marketing is doing, one way to help facilitate that engagement with sales is to really define what metrics we can expect to bring in. So I think that the way that we've been starting to think about metrics, Matt, is is in three different ways. You know, you have your campaign level metrics. You have those are more of what people are calling vanity metrics. You have your marketing performance metrics, which are more about how are leads being engaged at the top and middle of the funnel. And then you have your revenue metrics, which are metrics that more directly impact sales. They more directly impact the organization. And so if you can kind of tie in all of those kinds of metrics together under your campaign umbrella, I think that you'll be able to better understand where marketing plays a role, where sales plays a role, and where the handoff is between sales and marketing to better integrate between the two. Just wrapping up here in a few more minutes with Josh Baez. He's one of our client engagement managers here at Heinz Marketing. All the answers you've given so far, I mean, do, do they change if we're doing account-based work or if we're doing selling 
to enterprise organizations or selling to small business? Is there a different way that you approach execution and sort of driving and managing execution for one type of sale or one type of audience versus another? I don't think so. I mean, I think that really these are principles that we base all of our campaign work around. The way that I like to do it with whether it's ABM, whether it's just a general go-to-market strategy, I like to use our seven stages of predictable pipeline to help kind of organize the way that we do things. So we want to understand kind of like what I said before, we want to understand our target audience. We want to understand our messaging. We want to understand the different channels that we're using on both sales and marketing. And then we want to be able to integrate those together and make sure that people are on the same page, that we're talking about the same thing, that sales isn't just its own arm of the organization, but sales and marketing are a single continuation of the customer journey. Because in the end, like it's all about the customer. It's all about the user experience. I'm going to take a little left turn here and ask an unrelated question. So it's um, <laughs> we're ending summer and it's about to become fall. And if you know anything about Josh Baez, his excitement is just going to increase day to day, week to week for the rest of the year. Josh is, I mentioned he likes Death Cab for Cutie, but he is a, he is a Christmas super fan. Oh, man, and as the, as the weather gets cooler and as we start to see more candles and we smell more pine around. Oh. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. And we've got multiple holiday traditions that are celebrated here at Heinz Marketing. What should we be doing this year that's maybe a little different? What should we be doing? Because we got plenty of time to plan now, right? It's not even, we haven't even taken down our fall decorations. Like there's no Halloween stuff. At our house, Costco may have Christmas trees, but there's none of that at our house yet. So we got time. What should we be doing in an office space to like just really just lean in and celebrate the year, celebrate the season? Oh my goodness. Well, this is, wow, way to really put, this is truly on the spot. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm just going to list ideas right off the top of my head. Oh, there you go. Drinking. Definitely. No, that's right. That's very true. I think that drinking is probably the number one thing that you can do to celebrate. Second to that, let's just pump up the holiday music. Whatever you celebrate, I consider the holidays just festive times from November through January 1st. Let's be honest, though. I'm I'm celebrating now. I'm ready for October, at least. Definitely for the fall. I'm with you on that. Now, usually, I think I've I've said this before, like on social channels. Like once we get into October, like it's it's oh, Halloween it's time. Game over. But it, I, I mean, I've got I've I got a lot of travel already planned for October, and I I'm going to be secretly listening to my Christmas music on the plane. <laughs> um, I just no, it's, it's some of that music is so phenomenal. Like why we why do we limit ourselves to less than a month's time? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's just it's it's not right. So the the question now is Paul, like what's what do you think the over under is now now especially now that I brought this up. What's the over under on when Josh is going to haul the the office Christmas tree out and get it set up? I think it's coming sooner than you think. Now here, I think you just opened the door. Well, you know, it, it's Pacific time. Like we always record this at eleven thirty, so it's lunchtime. So I think I know what Josh might be doing on his lunch break today. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I just want to shoot you guys though because I kill myself every time the music starts too early. It should be a law that said it can't start until after Thanksgiving. But well, they started right. so. I'm not. I'm not quite where Josh is. Where I'm not going to make everyone else listen to Jingle Bells in October. But if I want to sit, if I want to sit in 16D on the way back from wherever, <laughs> right. and put on my headphones and just expose it to myself. You do it. Okay, you watch yeah, Charlie Brown's Christmas all you want beforehand. Just yeah. don't force us you be, to do you, it here. You be you. All right. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of you, you, thank you for listening to a very special episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. If you a, like a, this a Christmas episode early. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, in, in all seriousness, I think we're some really, really good feedback and advice from Josh on just being really focused and operational and being intentional and being realistic about how to execute programs. And if you'd like to share this with other colleagues on your team, if you'd like to force your CMO to listen to this to understand why things take some time, you will find the replay of this episode at salespipeonradio.com in a couple of days. And next week, we'll have an edited transcript of this up on Heinz Marketing as well. Got a lot of great guests coming up over the next few weeks, so make sure you continue to join us. But until then, for my great producer, Paul, this is Matt Hines. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. Well, ho, 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 you've been listening to another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. It's Christmas in September on the Funnel Radio Network.